Yes, I'm ready. OK, great. OK, so welcome, everyone, um, to the second day of, uh, of our program. Uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce Hiraku Nakajima, who's going to be uh, teaching us about instanton moduli spaces in W algebras. OK, so thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for introduction and thank you very much for invitation to uh, give a series of lectures here. And I'm very sorry that I, I cannot uh, go physically to IMPA. And uh, also I'm very sorry that, uh, that my talk is very early in the morning. Mm. Unfortunately, the time difference between Japan and Brazil is 12 hours, so it's night at four for me. And yeah, it's early morning for you. Okay, uh, I hope I have enough energy to, to give three lectures. So I first start with overview of my talk. So this part is, this part has no mathematical rigorous proof at all. And that is based on some physical uh, explanation. So in that sense, you don't need to understand uh, this, this motivation, uh, overview, this overview part. But somehow, uh, if you, some, if you don't have uh, some, 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 some level of understanding, you, some, you don't understand later lectures, motivation for later lectures. So that's the reason why I start with uh, this overview as an explanation physical explanation of the reason why uh, instant or modular space is something to do with double algebra. So anyways, uh, if you have any question, please uh, stop me and uh, please unmute and uh, please ask questions. Okay, and I think that I, unfortunately I cannot hear the surrogate lecture yesterday. But uh, as a far as I see from the title of his talk, his lectures, uh, I guess uh, he, or, he, 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 he somehow he explained uh, the same thing. Uh, but I hope uh, my, my explanation is something different from him. So anyway, uh, there is some vague expectation uh, starting from four-dimensional gaze, uh, in particular, uh, instant or modular space. Instant is a certain partial differential equation which arises in four-dimensional gaze. So then modular space means that uh, you consider the solutions of all those partial differential equations, and it forms some, some space, and people study the structures of those spa modular spaces. Then, uh, in particular, People use the technique of geometric representation theory that is uh, more especially, more specifically, so this is the, the so-called convolutional algebra. So once you have uh, some topological space uh, with some nice properties, you can define the so-called convolutional algebra. So this is a non-commutative, in general, non-commutative algebra, and it has, uh, various uh, nice properties and there are geometric representation theory uh, develops various tools to analyze such convolution algebra. Anyway, uh, so this is a very general technique, but if you apply this technique to instant or modular spaces, then you get uh, VOA. So this is, uh, this allows an chiral part with two dimensional compound fields. So we, we don't uh, explain uh, why we have such expectation, I mean, except for this overview part. But in later lectures, we discuss examples of this, uh, the example of the realization of, of this expectation in examples. So for example, uh, I can realize Heisenberg algebra, which is the most basic VOA as a certain instant modular space, more specifically, uh, it is so called Hilbert scheme points. And uh, this is my old work, uh, which was proved in 
90s. And uh, double algebra, which is the one, one of the title of my next series, realize double algebra is realized from the instant module space. So this is the uh, famous HGT conjecture, uh, originally uh, found in physical context. So HGT is a, a, the, the abbreviations of the three physicists, Aldai, Guy Otto, and Tachikawa. And uh, they, ex they explained that uh, double algebra should be realized from four dimensional gain theory. And uh, that is somehow uh, mathematically rigorously checked uh, in various cases. So I will, I will try to explain such such result. And more recently, I'm interested in realization of coset coset model from gain instant module. And maybe you notice. Uh, this is superficially similar to a topic discussed in Araka's lecture. So Araka, I, as far as I understand, Araka will uh, start the lecture next to, to mine. And he will uh, somehow assign uh, VOA uh, to four-dimensional uh, quantum field theory. Four-dimensional quantum field theory, gauge theory is, is a special case of quantum field theory. So his, his construction is more general, so he starts with four dimension, so called super conformality. And then he assigned two dimension, uh, he assigned boy, right? But this assignment, I mean, superficially same, I mean, for starting four dimension objects, he assigned two dimension one, but it's fundamentally different. So the, uh, the assignment is completely different. Maybe I, at some point I try to explain what is the relation between the, uh, this uh, my assignment and of course. But anyways, I, I just want to, up to this point, I just want to emphasize that this is different. Okay. Let's see, maybe this is Okay, uh, so natural question, right? Because, uh, I mean, you start with four dimensional quantum field theory and you end up with VOA, which is the kind of part of conform field theory, which is two dimension. So why dimension change from four to two? And why do we expect such, such construction? This, this is a very natural question. Okay. So as a mathematician, I only have a very unsatisfactory explanation. We only see examples, but no actual insight. We study many examples and we observe similar patterns, but somehow we don't see the actual philosophical reason why such such construction works. Maybe I, I want to point out, I mean, this is not so important in the lecture, but I mentioned that I studied uh, Heisenberg algebra and dated some points. And this, my earlier work have origin in geometric representation, in particular work of Wimio and Lustig. So they realize quantum group in, in, in a similar framework. And their works uh, were not uh, motivated by physics at all. So they, they, they studied the so-called quivers, representation theory of quivers in their original, how to say, their, their mo the, the mathematical motivation. So they, they, their study, their works are nothing to do with physics. 
But somehow, as far as the example, we have more and more examples. Found, found, we found more and more examples. Somehow, uh, we start to understand. Uh, somehow, we, there is some, some reason uh, behind, which unfortunately uh, difficult for mathematicians to understand. But the physicists can somehow understand. So why is have an answer to those questions? So physicists are great and use result. They can use result which have no mathematical foundation at all. And mathematicians, you must start with definition and theorems and the theorem requires proofs. So we argue in that way. But physicists are more, more brave. So they argue in this way. So it is a consequence of an existence of more hypothetical six dimensional quantum fields. Okay. I say, I so physicists are easy, easy, easy physics travel quite easily uh, over various dimensions. So we, we talked about four and two, and then uh, you just sum. So this is start with six, six dimensional quantum fields, which is a sum of four and two, okay? And this quantum field theory is uh, defined for, for, for an ID linking diagram. If you choose ID linking diagram, you have corresponding six dimensional quantum fields. Okay. And usually, uh, if you study uh, physics a little bit in undergraduate or maybe a little bit more advanced, so maybe you ha ha may have the but how uh, quantum mechanics is uh, developed. So this is start with uh, first introducing uh, Lagrangian and they consider the Euler Lagrangian. So Lagrangian is a, some functional or defined on the space of uh, fun fields or fields with uh, uh, functions or differential forms and such kind of things. So anyway, so physicists first study the euler lagrange equation, that is the sum partial differential equation. But that only gives uh, the classical, classical field theory. And physicists, this is quantized that field, classical field theory. And quantization is, there are several approaches to quantization. And one of the approach, famous approach, is due to Feynman. So he considered the so-called path integral. So he considered the integration of those like, exponential Lagrangian over the space of all fields. And that explains uh, that, that gives quantum. But this, it, it, it famously, it is well known that this path integral is not mathematically rigorously well defined. But this six dimensional quantum field says it's much, e e even more uh, problematic. So there is no Lagrangian. So as I said, quantum fields usually start with Lagrangian and consider the path integral. But this, this six dimensional theory has no Lagrangian description. So you don't have, you don't start with Lagrangian. But nevertheless, physicists believe that such theory exists. This sounds very strange, but physicists accept such strange concept. And anyway, so this uh, hypothetical, this six dimensional, if you believe the, the existence of this hypothetical six dimensional quantum field theory, you can nicely explain this relation between four dimensional gauge theory and two dimensional conformal field theory. Okay, let me try to explain 
Ah, oh, this is Dougie. So six dimensional quantum field theory. I mean, in the usual formulation, as I said, they consider the path integral. And uh, so path integral gives, so this is like some integration over some space. So this should give some number, okay? So in particular, you first uh, take Riemann six dimensional manifold. Maybe possibly you, you should also uh, put uh, Riemannian metric and if you have, you, you may need, need to add additional fees, but just ignore that. And uh, even though there's no Lagrangian, so the path integral doesn't make sense, but physicists believe that if you can consider some, some kind of strange path integral, although there is no Lagrangian, so you can assign number, right? So in this way, they believe that such assignment uh, it, it, it can be considered. Then uh, you further consider the five-dimensional manifold, so which you, you, you can consider as uh, boundary of six-dimensional manifold, which I just discussed. Then uh, if you have a six-manifold with boundary, then uh, you must first fix uh, fields on, on the boundary to consider the path integral. And as I said, uh, there's no, uh, or maybe, maybe, uh, not. So, as, so, so suppose, suppose for simplicity, suppose we, we do have uh, Lagrange. Therefore, given four, five manifold, and we uh, fix a boundary condition, and we consider the all Riemann, for example, all Riemann, all, all fields, uh, on six manifold, whose restriction to the boundary is a given, given, given. Then uh, it is, it gives a number, but this number depends on the boundary condition. So it means in this path integral, you, you, you can define function on the space of the, of the fields on the boundary. So you get the some, some big uh, vector space consisting of those functions. So physicists say that in quantum field theory, in six dimension, so six dimension manifold, you, you, you can assign a number to six dimension manifold and the vector space of functions on five, manifold, five, five dimension manifold, which can be this boundary, basically. And they say that even though there is no Lagrangian description in this six, hypothetical six-dimensional quantum field, they say that you can still expect that the, the assignment from five-dimensional manifold to vector space still makes sense. And they consider the quantum field theory is defined in this manner. So if you heard about uh, Atiyah Siegel's axiomatic approach to topological quantum field theory, it's, it's basically very simple. So in, in, in conclusion, so this is said, if you believe this hypothetical six-dimensional quantum field theory, you can assign number to 16 manifold and vector space, usually called quantum field space, to find that manifold, okay? So this is uh, the input. And then, so you must just accept that and we must hope. So you must accept that to, to, to proceed. Okay. Once, if you once, once you accept that, 
then we can take six as a special example of six manifold and five five manifold. We first fix four manifold x4. Right. X4. And we only consider uh, six manifold of this form, x4 times sigma 2, sigma 2 is the surface. To the edge, so. And for 5D manifold, so we just take x4 times s1. Or maybe possibly if sigma 2 has several boundaries, so we, we just consider the disjoint unions of x4 times s1. So you only take those six and five manifolds by first fixing four manifolds. Then uh, it can be viewed as two-dimensional quantum field theory because so you can you can now change change sigma two and this ones, okay? One numbers of the different unions of the same because. If you take a two manifold the sigma, then you just take x force times sigma, and you consider this as a six dimensional manifold. So by this six dimensional quantum field, you can assign a number. Okay? And if you forget the, the middle process, then it just uh, gives an assignment from two manifold to a number. Okay? And for one dimensional manifold, in the same way, you assign vector space. So the, the association is very similar. So instead of six manifolds and five manifolds, so you assign numbers and vector space to two manifold and one manifold. So this is a two dimensional. And moreover, uh, physicists say, uh, so this is in fact in, in some, some, some twist, so-called twist, topological twist. So this construction can make, uh, this is topological in four dimension and conformal in two dimension. What does it mean? So this construction depends on, on the topology of four manual, not the Riemannian method. So even if you change the Riemannian metric, the resulted assignment remains the same. And conformal in 2D means that, so it depends only on the conformal structure of sigma. Or the, the only the complex, I mean, sigma is, sigma equipped with conformal structure means this, this it, it, it is a, complex curve, complex manifold, one dimensional complex manifold. And in this way, uh, you get a uh, conformal field cell into it. Okay. And in particular, uh, so you expect uh, this quantum Hilbert space. This quantum Hilbert space is expected to be some kind of cohomology. And the instant is, is, is defined for four four dimensional gauge. So in particular, you must choose a gauge group. So this gauge group is determined by gauge group is the, the diagonal. So we call that in this six manifold is defined for a D thinking diagram.
and you, you, you there's some 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 mod slight modification to deal with other gauge group, but I don't have to explain that. But anyway, so in, for for relation between realization for double algebra, so far we have only have the proof in type AD. So anyway, this is a natural assumption. <coughs> okay. So I think uh, Gukov also considered similar setting and he considered various four manifolds, but somehow uh, my viewpoint or my, the topic of my talk, lectures are different. So we take some specific four manifold. In fact, which is not the literary four manifold, but it is four manifold with action. And as a four manifold, this is the simplest case, simplest one. So this is just a C2, C2 or R4. But we also consider uh, S1 times S1 action on, on C2. So given by the multiplication on each copy. So Z1 is Z. And as I said, so we expect quantum Hilbert space is a cohomology of uh, this AD type gauge group instance modular space on, on C2. But as I said, uh, we don't just are not, we, we, we also con we consider it C2 uh, together with S1 cross S1 action. So we must somehow uh, incorporate the, this action into the story. And there is a standard machinery, which has been used in geometric computation for many years. So this is the so-called equivalent cohomology. So if you have a space with group action, then uh, somehow you enrich the, the cohomology cell so that somehow you, that some information of the action can be put on the, the cohomology. Okay. Then, uh, as a result, uh, the VOF, which we obtain in this construction, is not the usual VOF, which people have been studying. So in fact, uh, VOA is, is defined over polynomial ring, right? Usually VOA is defined over complex field, but it has a parameter. And this par parameter can, can vary. But the most natural setting, more natural setting is considering VOA defined over polynomial. And this polynomial ring, it's, identified with equivalent cohomology of point. Okay. I hope, I, I, I don't assume, I, I, I don't assume so the audience is comfortable with the cohomology, but somehow I, I don't want to uh, explain the detail. I mean, of course I must explain some, some part of equivalent cohomology, group, but I don't want to give the definition of equivalent homology as people are taught in, in, in classes. But instead, we just, uh, some, I, I try to explain in, in a little bit axiomatic way. So for, for a topological space, the cohomology group is defined. So this is a vector space. I mean, on, I only consider the so-called cohomology group with complex coefficients. 
So this is a cohomology group of a topological space is a complex vector space. And it is a contravariant functor. So if you have a continuous map between topological spaces, then you have the homomorphism in opposite direction. And it has various things. I will explain some various properties which I will use later. So equivalent cohomology is similar. So you assign some algebraic object to topological space with a group action. So this algebraic object is not a complex vector space. So it is a, it, it, instead it is a module of a polynomial. But I mean, of course, I mean, you studied the, the, the I, I hope you, um, you, you studied the commutative rings and vector space over fields and modules over polynomial rings are somehow similar, I mean, natural generalization. So anyway, uh, equivalent cohomology is a module over polynomial. And the V of A is defined over polynomial. And so you know that the, the double algebra is defined as a uh, deduction, or well, maybe the, the, the semi infinite cohomology of the affine real, affine, affine VOA. Okay? And uh, level, level is uh, some, some parameter in for the double algebra, which can vary. And they have different behavior for generic value and the spe special values. And in fact, in this construction of double algebra in terms of instant homogeneous space, so this double algebra is more naturally defined over polynomial. And the level, level is a rational function in, this, in the variables of uh, polynomial. So this polynomial ring is a polynomial ring of two variables. So because we have we consider the S1 cross S1 action. So each S1 gives polynomial ring of one variable. So if you consider S1 cross S1, so you have polynomial ring of polynomial ring in two, two variables. And the double, this, when once you try to identify the, the level of the double algebra, it's a function in Q1, Q2 it becomes a rational function. But somehow it is a slightly better viewpoint and you can slightly change the way of understanding of the algebra. Then you can understand it is a way defined of problem. Okay, uh, I think this is the end of my overview part. So I uh, make a uh, I, I stop now and uh, I just want to uh, receive a question. So if you have any, any question, this is a good point to ask. Any questions? No question. I don't think we have any. Here, no. Thanks. No question? No, no, for now, no. Okay, uh, then let me continue.
Ok, ahí. Nyt ei olisi ikiväinen, kun mä olisin. Niin kaksi tai osa on niin ikiväinen, kun mä olisin. And I mostly consider the, the, the case of the group is Taurus, but I a little bit more general. I, I study a little bit more general case. I assume uh, G to be complex with that group. So, DRN, Taurus, TN, Algebra Taurus. Then I consider X with G action. So X is reasonable topological space. And this action is reasonable action. I don't explain what do I mean by reasonable, but the, some example, The, the basic example is the following. So suppose X is complex algebraic variety. So this is defined by polynomials, set the polynomials in, in, in CN. So this is a reasonable space. And in order to make the action is also reasonable, I assume Uh, the, the, in fact, the Z action is induced from the linear action on C. So namely, you have representation of G in the usual sense on the vector space. Then this complex algebraic variety is preserved under the G axis. This is a setting which I'm considering. I will not, uh, Specify, special, specify uh, which, kind, which vector space uh, I embed this, uh, oops, I embed uh, our space. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is some, I mean, as in, you studied uh, in, in manifold theory. Manifold is embedded in Euclidean space, but usually Euclidean space is not relevant. So I, I introduce uh, various spaces, which is probably not embedded in, in vector space, but by some general machinery. I only consider those spaces which can be embedded in, in vector space in this way. Okay, anyway, then uh, you can assign equivalent cohomology and homology. Specifically, so we use the so called Borel Moore homology. So, this is slightly different from the usual one. I will explain what so. And I denote this by this stuff. So, this is a graded vector space. And the star, star, so the graded. So cohomology is non-negatively graded to this star, 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 it's zero, one, two, so on. But Borel homology, so this, this, this is different. So starting from, so I'm implicitly assume X is a manifold possibly with mild similarity. So dimension doesn't make sense. And then, Dimension x minus one. Dimension can 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 decrease. <laughs> so, no, no. Dimension can can go go. In the usual cohomology, so the, the, this degree stop at dimension x, but for equivalent cohomology, so. Infinite, possibly infinitely many <laughs> degree can survive. And the homology group, similar, infinitely many degree 
can survive. But the degree could be going to negative because you subtract, sub subtract numbers from dimension x, and this number is greater than dimension x, then this star becomes negative. Okay. Then, uh, important point, important property of the equivalent module is, this is a module, equivalent homology and equivalent volume of homology is a module over equivalent homology of point. So in the usual cohomology, without group action, cohomology of point, point is a one-dimensional vector space, which is, which lives in degree zero. <laughs> but equivalent homology could be non-trivial, even for, for, for the very trivial space, namely a single point. <laughs> and this is, maybe I briefly say how this is defined. So this is defined in the so-called Borel construction. <laughs> so you consider the so-called classifying space. <laughs> Maybe I just give you uh, your yeah. Labor so in the in the in the labor of class thanks. If G equals C star, then you consider C N that N is surface integral, C N minus zero, and you have a natural action C star and quotient. Quotient is CP n minus one. <laughs> so classifying space is denoted by U T. And in this particular case of C star, so E star is limit in a suitable sense of this C n minus. <laughs> and this construction and EG is general, G band over EG. <laughs> so this, this quotient <laughs> is compatible with N, so B of system, it's limitless. <laughs> and the equivalent homology is defined. Find as <laughs> cohomology of this kind of space. <laughs> so you first take product of x and and this easy, and then consider the <laughs> action of diagonal action of z and take cos. <laughs> so even if x is a single point, you still consider uh, easy quotient by G. And in particular, this case, G when G equals C star, <laughs> this EG quotient by G is nothing but this com complex vectors, local complex project space. <laughs> and the cohomology of <laughs> GPN minus one is well known. I hope most of you know that this is <laughs> truncated polynomial ring. So you take the limit, and it goes to infinity, so they use some, some you take it for polynomial in by one body. So, so this is H star, C star. So anyway, so this is 
you <laughs> even if you don't understand this kind of construction, but anyway, so this equivalent homology point is something non-trivial, already complete. And in fact, it is known that a complex reductive group, this, this is in, in fact a polynomial. <laughs> so this is a first standard fact on equivalent commodity. This is a polynomial in polynomial <laughs> while group invariant part. <laughs> T is the real algebra of torus. So T is a maximum torus. <laughs> So I already explained this result for when G, G is a C star. So in this case, there is no wild group, and G is equal to T. And this, I explained that equivalent homology point for C star is a polynomial ring in one variable. And this polynomial ring in one variable can be regarded as polynomial on the real level of C star, it is one variable. This is this course in module. And the equivalent cohomology of the glue G and the equivalent cohomology of torus T is very close. And, and maybe I should also. So it is also well known that if you take the invariant part of the polynomial functions on the real, this is again polynomial. So any anyway, uh, second fact in equivalent homology, it's the, the equivalent homology of G and equivalent homology of T are closely related. <laughs> so as a special case of the, this fact, so you consider G and T compare the equivalent homology point for G and T. <laughs> so then, then the only difference is whether you take double invariant part one. <laughs> and this dif difference remains to be true for arbitrary topological space with G out. <laughs> and this, because of this, in some sense, in order to understand equivalent homology, with respect to G, you only need to understand equivalent homology for T and take while group. Uh, and then you also need to understand action of the group. And usually right hand side is easier to understand. Okay. Then, uh, So one of the most important <laughs> results for equivalent homology is the localization. <laughs> so we consider Fixed point set. So I only consider the case G, G is torus, <laughs> because of this, this is not, because of the, the, the last fact, it's not a big loss. <laughs> I consider the XT, which is T fixed point set in it. 
and this is a sub cross the subset in X. So I, and I denote this inclusion by that. <laughs> Oops. Now. Okay. Yeah, we can see your screen again. So I is inclusion. Then uh, we consider equivalent of homology, T equivalent of homology X, and we have pullback homology to X T. <laughs> and on the homology group. So in the, it goes in the opposite. <laughs> so fix homology of the fixed point is mapped to homology of the whole space. <laughs> and this this is, is not isomorphic mean general, but it, the, the localization theorem says those become isomorphism. After ten seconds, so these these are modules of equivalent homogeneous point, and I take tensor product of a fraction of equivalent homogeneous point with fractional field of instant, right? So in in the case t when t t is sister, so t equals sister. Equivalent homogeneous point is its C of X, and the fraction of is is a is a rational function, right? So we consider this, this operation. If you apply this kind of operation, then it becomes isomorphic. Okay.
Okay, I don't uh, explain uh, the proof of this this result. So I, instead, I, I give you example. So suppose x is CP1 and t is t2. We have an action t1, t2. So I use a homogeneous coordinate of CP1. So this is a multiplication for each coordinate. The fixed point, I mean, this is the, you, you, I mean, diagonal, diagonal C star acts trivially. So this is induced from uh, action, C star action on, on X. And if you identify X with two, two, two sphere, then this C star action is induced from the rotational S1 action. And this rotational S1 action has two fixed points. So this is uh, North Pole and South Pole. And in this homogeneous coordinate, then it's just one zero and zero. <laughs> so homogeneous coordinate is, is very defined up to scale. So if one of the coordinate entries vanishes, then it is fixed. <laughs> okay. Then, H star of T of X. So this is our uh, equivalent of a homogeneous projective space. So maybe I slightly change the, the variable. So I use H. So I say the CPN is a truncated polynomial. Instead of X, I use H. And in relation is uh, H square is equal to zero. But we have additional variables. So it's tau T of point. I use two variables, C of X1, X2 for that. So I have x1, x2. And the relation is instead of h squared is equal to zero, this is perturbed like this. So this is basically because, how to say, the trivial, the trivial rank two bundles, but it's not trivial as equivalent if you also equip with the torus section. So this x1, x2 appears in, in this way. So this is the Then uh, I start. So I star is given by the restriction to those fixed points. <laughs> and it's of T of X2. So this is the two points. So you have two copies of polynomial in two variables. And in fact, if this is f of h of x1, x2, modulo this equation, <laughs> then uh, this is mapped to f of h is equal to minus x1 plus f is equal to h equal to minus x2. Right, so this relation is must. Uh, this relation mu must be must be respected. So, uh, so h plus x one uh, times h plus x two equals zero, and in order to uh, send them up to two copies of polynomial in, in x one x two, then I think that the 
the only possibility is a restriction to h equal x minus x1 or h equal minus x. And in fact, you can, if you go through the definition, you can, and also some description of it. Back to complex projective space, you can just see this. And so I said that this I star becomes isomorphism after tensoring with uh, fraction of years. Let us see this. So let us try to try to compute the inverse. So suppose we are given two functions, two functions in two variables, g1 and g2, and then try to find h, which is returned back to g1 and g2 by substitution. And you can, you can easily guess what it is, and inverse. So this is not really well defined. So inverse is x2 minus x1, 1 over x minus times x2 plus h g1 minus x1 plus h times g2. And indeed, if you specialize x1 is equal to minus h, then this second term uh, just disappears. And this becomes x2 minus x1. x plus h becomes x2 minus x1. So this cancels with this denominator. So you become a 0, right? So this is the inverse. But you see that this is not really polynomial in there. So because you, you, you must divide by x2 minus x1. This is because inverse is not. Okay. Okay, so I, I, I don't explain. I don't. So for uh, about the uh, equivalent Borel Moore homology. So yeah, I just want to give you more so much. So this is different, different even for the ordinary without without considering the group action. It is different from the usual homology. But the advantage of this polyrhythmic homology is, so this fundamental class, of a smooth manifold, or even complex algebraic variety, it reduces the complex. It's defined even even when x is non compact. So for usual homology group. So this is defined first considering the cycles and you define the differential. And the cycles is a finite sum of, uh, of a map from, from, from the cell, cell, cell to space. And if X is, X is non-compact, then uh, the whole space cannot be covered by finite sum of the <laughs> such such uh, such maps. But if you allow infinite sum, which is locally finite, it means that for each given point, the 
you only help and if you take some some neighborhood then in the those cycles which intersect with this neighborhood is finite then uh, you can define the homology itself as in the usual thing. and the fundamental class is good. so anyway so I don't want to go into the detail of the uh, definition explanation in the definition of homology so instead I uh, try to explain it in axiomatic <coughs> approach and uh, one drawback for this uh, fundamental class because we make the definition of the fundamental class is defined even for non-compact space so there is a drawback the drawback is so if x if you have a continuous map from x to y for usual homology group so you have the induced map so usually don't know if star but to imagine that if y is, is a point and x is a is a manifold so this f star is given by integration over by x by first using the, the point called duality uh, from starting from cohomos to go to homos so anyway if x is non-compact the integration is not very really defined so corresponding to this observation so push forward homology is not defined for arbitrary continuous map but if you assume f to be proper which means the inverse image of compact sub compact subset is compact <laughs> or it is uh, it extends to a continuous between one point complication then uh, this push forward homology is Okay, and then I give example of homology, volume homology, equivalent volume homology. So we consider X C with the S one action, assist action, and then uh, H star of T of C. So this has fundamental class of C. So this is C. Maybe C. I mean, C, C is a bit confusing, so I switch to X. So this is a fundamental class. And as usual, this sits in degree two. And this this is a module module over uh, polynomial in 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 one variable, which is equivalent to module point. And as a module, this is h star of t of point coupled to this this x. So cohomology ele element of equivalent cohomology decrease the degree so this 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 was polynomial in, in one variable so this cx x and this n decreases the, the homological degree. So this is this is degree in degree two minus. So as I said, uh, so degree could be negative number for equivalent module. So it starts with two, and the next one is zero. 
and next one is minus two and minus four and so on. So equivalent of what uh, magnetic limit. Okay. This works. And I consider H star T of X T, X point. So this is the origin. So this is a single point, and this is isomorphic. It's the T of point, and this fundamental class of origin. So this, this this is degree. This, this has degree. Instead of starting from from two, it starts from degree zero and degree minus two and so on. Okay. Maybe instead of zero, no, it is a bit confusing. I did not get a p. And p p is just zero. I just make it. It looks like a space. And then I have I inclusion in this case is proper. So I have map from next to so this. We have the fundamental cross of point. So this is mapped to in, in equivalent homology of the whole space. But this is de in degree zero, and the de degree is preserved. So what could be the possibility? So this is only possible. Possibly this is a, uh, it could be multiple of x. Capped with x because of the degree, but in fact this coefficient is one. So this this is mapped to this. this. Okay. So then you see that uh, what is inverse? So inverse in this case. So if you, for example, if you want to map x. To some, some element in equivalent homology of a fixed point, then what could be possible? So this is x one over x times fundamental class of the fixed point, right? But this is not a polynomial. So this is not defined. But x. So this is the reason why uh, in the localization theorem, you must tensor with fractional field, right? So we come back to this localization theorem. So there are natural map uh, put back by the inclusion or push part is the inclusion. So this is a defined, this is, this is defined over, this is a module, uh, homomorphism of, between modules of a polynomial ring, but they are not isomorphic. And it becomes isomorphism if you tensor with fractional series. So if we, somehow in, 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 in VOA, uh, I mentioned in the case of a double algebra, so you consider a level, the level is uh, some rational function in variables of equivalent variable, equivalent homology, and I mentioned that if this level is generic, then uh, somehow uh, uh, the, 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 the representation theory behave differently. Maybe I didn't mention about representation theory. But the representation theory behave differently for generic level and special. special. For generic level, mean that if you, the, the generic level const Correspond to tensoring the fractional field, right? 
So this, of course, you see, for example, in this particular example. So you, you know, particular two examples. So you, something is defined over polynomial in x1 and x2, but in, when you consider this inverse of pullback homomorphism, so something bad, bad thing appears when x1 is equal to x2. But if you assume x1 is not equal to x2, so that is something corresponding to the generic level, the inverse is defined. And once something has inverse, then you, 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 you could say quite a lot. So I hope you, 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 you have some feeling that, well, generic levels, uh, you, you have some uh, good to understand. You, you, can, you can imagine that implementation theory at generic level could be successful. And similarly for equivalent homology. For this particular case, if x is equal to zero, uh, those two uh, modules become uh, are not isomorphic. But if you invert x, if you assume x is not zero, then uh, they, they become isomorphic. Okay. Okay, this this is the end of my crash course on equivalent homology. So, do you have any question? So, I make a pause. So, I accept. I, I receive a question. Ah, uh, yeah, we have a question here. <clears throat> Hello. Uh, Hi. So regarding the localization theorem, it didn't seem like you needed to use the full field of fractions, but you were localizing at like certain um, points. Is there like a significance to what those points were? So here you localize at x equals zero. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. It, it's a very good question. In fact, the localization, I, I just, statement which I write down here is not precise enough. In fact, to you, you, you have some, some geometric description which function you should invert. But this, this involves some, some knowledge on, so this, is the, this depends on the, the group action on the space. So I just make uh, the statement to, to simple. I just uh, give an imprecise uh, statement. But if you look at the, the localization theorem in, in the text book, you, you, you will find a fine, much finer statement. So you know that the, you, you should invert several functions, and those functions can, can be described in terms of group action. Right, I see. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in, in, in application to my, 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 my lectures, in, in, in my lectures, I don't need this uh, refined form of the localization. So this, this general statement, imprecise statement is enough for my purpose. So that's the reason why I stated this. Sorry, may I ask a question? Yes. Um, are these modules generally um, financially generated over the... Um, yeah, uh, over I only... Yeah, so, so this is something similar. If you have considered the uh, topological space and uh, I mean, just to forgetting the equivalent group action and for, for, for some topological space, you consider the corresponding cohomology group. So this is a vector space. And in general, this is not a finite dimension. There is no reason for that. But if you consider uh, some reasonable space, for example, manifold, which is, uh, in general, even if manifold, if you don't assume it to be compact, it could be 
infinite dimension. For, for example, if you know the uh, cohomology of surface, and if you consider the, uh, some non-compact surface whose genus is infinity, then the cohomology group is infinite dimension. But implicitly, this Riemann surface of infinite genus is not the example of complex algebraic variety. So I implicitly assume that we don't consider such uh, wild topological space. So I only consider some reasonable space. Then uh, this usual uh, cohomology group is finite dimensional vector space. And if I assume X is uh, embedded in vector space, even with respecting the group action, then equivalent cohomology is finitely generated. I only describe the, the module which is free of a uh, polynomial ring, but in fact, uh, maybe I didn't explain that. But in general, for example, uh, maybe this is a trivial application of the localizer sensor. So for example, if you consider the complement of x minus xt, write this in a list today. Why? Then, by definition, yt is empty. Then, uh, it is star of t of y. So if you tensor with equivalent module point with fractional field, then this is zero because the, the equivalent homology of fixed point is uh, equivalent homology of, of empty set, which is zero. So we have this one. But in general, it doesn't mean that this equivalent homology is zero because it is sub T of Y could be torsion. So in, in this yeah. particular, in, in this part, 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 kind of situation, the typically it's that T of Y is a torsion. So I didn't give the exa explicit example, but this is finitely generated, but not necessarily free. Okay, so in thank practice, you. I, yeah, in practice, I don't use such, such uh, torsion, explicitly torsion modules, but if you go 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 into the definition of uh, the, the go go into the proof of the local difference, I mean, you somehow need to understand also torsion. Okay, maybe on, I only have five minutes left, so uh, it doesn't make sense to go into a new topic. Uh, so I, next, tomorrow I will briefly explain what is instant modular spaces, and maybe I cannot go into the precise definition again, but somehow I try to explain uh, what kind of space it looks like. And again, uh, because of this, I apply this uh, localization sermon, so I need to understand what are the fixed points. That is most important property of this instant homogeneous space. So I will try to explain that tomorrow. Thank you for your attention. I stop now. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, let's thank the speaker. Uh, so I guess we had questions just now, but uh, if there are any other further questions, uh, please go ahead. Um, or on Zoom, uh, feel free uh, just to open open mic. No. Okay. No further questions here. So let's thank the speaker again. Okay. So. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, we'll resume at 10 o'clock uh, with the next speaker, which will be uh, Professor Arakawa uh, here in person. And so now we have a uh, coffee break.